Hi, I'm the Idiomatic, and this is Prime Mover. This is a game that I saw on a forum thread about uh, Zachtronic style games, and I saw that a couple of people on my Steam list had it, so I was like, yeah, hey, I'll check it out. And it's actually pretty good. So I didn't see it getting a lot of attention, so I was like, yeah, I'll make a video on it. Uh, where am I? Okay. Well, these are just the tutorial videos. They're they're not that important. I'll explain what everything does. So let's just go with the, with the beginner one. This is like the first puzzle you get after the tutorials. So I can go over what all of the all of uh, the tools you have to. All right. I think this was like my second working solution, but not much better than the first one which apparently I broke but so you have like your basic wire and you can make it normal speed or slow it down it's just like delaying it a tick in this game they're called ticks in most electronic games they're called cycles you know same same thing uh, this is the bridge basically you know if you had a wire and you need to go through and then go through again then you can do that you can't put two numbers I said I should explain that the whole idea of the game is that you're trying to take a number from an input and put it to an output it's it's like space chem but with numbers you know but the thing is you have to do something with the with the numbers so instead of you know working with molecular bonds you're adding subtracting you're checking to see if something's positive if something's negative you know you're doing things to the numbers and the tools that you have uh they aid you in that but they have their own limitations um so yeah i'll just you know what i'm just gonna show this one working and i'll go over what happens as you know i'll do it in step so the idea with this puzzle is that you get in the you get an input and you have to successively shrink it one by one until it gets down to to one and then it'll reset that's what RST is for and then it'll do it again so you have to build a machine that can handle you know any number that you throw at it so um, Right here, it's hitting a duplicator, or is that what it's called? It's what it, it's what it's called. It's a duplicator. Um, it'll just so if it comes in from one position, it'll go into any other position that it can. And I think it has a maximum of three inputs, or like three connections. The same thing with uh, this thing right here, which what it does is it directs numbers based on whether they're positive, negative, or zero. So what this is doing is, it's coming up here, it's duplicating, so it'll send out a 10, and then it'll hit this, which, depending on what direction you're, you're going in, will either subtract or add 1 to it. And it'll also act as a bridge, which is what I'm using it here for. Um, so it'll subtract 1, it'll check again, kick out a 9, 8, 7, you know, so on and so forth, until it hits 0, and then it'll just go here and this is basically like a trash bin it'll just throw it out and it adds one at this point but it doesn't matter because it's being thrown away anyway so you can see that working speed it up a bit that go now this one was what 322 which obviously isn't my fastest solution and of course you know you see the list and you see people doing better than you and you just have to try to do better so that's what I did and that's what this solution was right here so this was after I've done a few of the more advanced puzzles and I learned you know what certain things you could do with the different pieces so this right here is basically it's a flip-flop you know it's called a toggle but you know it's the same thing um, 
So what this is doing is this is a faster version of the whole subtraction setup because before it was going in a loop of six. Now it's bouncing back and forth, so it's like four. But since it's passing through duplicators each time, it's gonna it's gonna put out too many numbers. So you want to get rid of half of the ones that come through. So that's what I did. So so I have a toggle so that the first one will go through, and then it'll go. The second one will go to the trash, and the same thing for this side. And then this right here was for a special case. Like I found out that for the odd numbers, it was sending out at zero here. So I had to send that to the trash, but it works a lot faster. There you go. Ah, uh, all right. Let's see what's a good one here. No cleaner. This was this was an interesting one. This one was interesting because you had to get rid of the zeros, but this thing only has three inputs or like three connections. So it's like, okay, how do you do that without kicking back either a positive or a negative? What you do is you can have it kick back, but you have it kick back into a flip flop and then it'll just like, it'll kick out the zeros and then the pluses and minuses will will go out their own way. And then I had this reset it. I should explain that too. This button will reset anything it is targeted on. So you can flip it around and I have it on this. A lot of times you're going to be using it on locks, which basically just like you can lock or unlock you know a number in place and that's good for if uh, if you need something to wait until something's cleared out and so I've gone over pretty much everything here except for this right here this is a chip well it's a it's a mini board basically and it's just more board space that you can use I haven't had to use it for anything yet, but for the puzzle that I'm working on, I think I might need it. So I'm getting to that point. Uh, anyway, you can watch this one work. So the interesting thing about this, and I'll slow it down, is that I didn't need to put a lock up here because these are naturally blocked by this being the wrong way so they won't come through until this is already past the point where it needs to be which is useful and yeah you know worked out really well This one was like a more advanced version of the clock, I think. Yeah, this is where I I had a, you know, if it was negative, it went over here and did a subtraction loop until it got down to negative, no, until it got down to zero. Wait, is that right? Negative, down to negative, loops around, keeps on adding until it hits zero, and then once it hits zero, it goes down this path and it goes negative one because, as you can see, if something is positive, then it, you have to send out positive one. If something's negative, you have to send out negative one. And you just get different numbers. So you're basically just turning these numbers into like either like a single version of whether they're positive or negative. And this one I had to use a, a lock.
kind of fun to watch. But this one's pretty slow. I think, yeah, this is the fast one. So, this is an improved version of the, what is it, of the whole subtraction and addition loop. It just bounces back and forth until it detects zero. So, it's, it's a similar design, it's just faster, you know. This thing moves pretty fast too, which is nice. Boom. Yeah, nice improvement on the, over the competition, but there's still somebody that did a little bit faster, so you know, it's always room for improvement. But you can see at the any time it detects a zero. I am duplicating it so I can send a signal to the lock so that the next one can come through. And let's see. So, you know, these ones right here, you know, these are just tutorials so they're green. And then these are like easy, medium, so they're orange. And then you go over here and they start getting you know, a little darker. And then you have these ones which I haven't unlocked yet. So let's see, uh, what's a good one here? Add. Okay, yeah. So this one was just like, you were subtracting from one end and then adding it to the other end. And I believe, oh yeah, this is the faster version. So let's just watch that. Actually, no, I'll watch the slow one first. Actually, let's watch it go slow. So, so yeah, as long as there is something here to reset this, then it'll go into its own loop, which is subtracting from here and then adding from here. Once there's nothing, i.e. once it detects zero, then it's like, okay, I can't get sent this way, so I'm going to get sent that way. And then it resets itself so that, you know, when the next one comes through, it's ready to go. Let's see. Yeah, there wasn't too much of a difference between this one and the next one. Or this one and the fastest one. Let's see. So, alright, the big difference here is that this is on an 8 loop and this is on a 6 loop. I was thinking of maybe there was a way to change that to a tighter loop, but I don't know. The thing is, like, you have to go in a straight line when you either add or subtract, so there's like a hard limit on you either like go in this tight of a loop or you can go back and forth like on the previous puzzle and but like there's other things happening here like this whole situation so So, one interesting thing I noticed here was that, so, since this one was going first, I was worried about these being not synchronized, right? But it turns out, that doesn't really matter. Because you want this one to hit faster than this one anyway. So, it being off by a few uh, ticks wasn't even a huge issue. So, I could have it unlock this, unlock this, and then go out. Instead of having, like, I think, did I have two on this one? I did, yeah. So on this one, I basically came around, duplicated it, and made them get there 
as close to the same time as possible. It was unnecessary. So I'm going to show the first puzzle that actually gave me some pause and I actually had to like think about it and break out the pencil and paper and work on it at work. And that was this one right here. So this one's interesting because basically you have these numbers right here. So you have a sequence of numbers and then once you hit zero, that's the end of the sequence. You have to take that and then send it out in the opposite order. So like you can see five, sixteen, eight. So it's and five, sixteen, eight, zero. So you have zero, eight, sixteen, five. So it just does this for a number of sequences, right? So you're like, all right, how in the world do I reverse blocks? Well, what you do is you take this and you create a sort of directional lock. So like since these are always like positive or negative, once the button hits, they will flip to either to the opposite. And then the main issue was just the timing of it all. Because a couple things had to happen. You have to send them into this spot. You have to detect the zero. You have to flip them all. You have to have enough time for them to come out. You have to unlock the next set. And then you have to reset the locks so that the next set will go through the right way. Yeah. So I looked through the list and I noticed that at most there were five positive numbers before you hit a zero. Any more, and I think I would have had to resort to using one of these. Like the thing about these are like they give you extra space to work with, but you know it's like creating extra space within the board so everything moves slower. Alright, let me speed this up. But yeah, there's the five, and it gets set in the reverse order. Boom. And yeah, so I did it right here. Yeah. And I'm not even knocking this person because they're the only other person so far that's beaten this. And in the beginning puzzles, there were at least four people on my list, and now there are only two, so it shows you that the difficulty definitely ramped up. And then we have this next one right here, which is just like, I don't even know. Like, I know that this right here is just not going to work. This is like my opening idea of what I needed to do. And, but, all right, so... I'll go over visually what you have to do. So, you send C to A, B, or D to B, right? If you hit a negative one, then you're not gonna send negative one to, to there. You're gonna send a copy of whatever's over here to there. And then you have to be able to do the same thing in the opposite direction. So it's like, man, you have to create a case where that's all gonna work. And it's just, I don't know. And this is another one where I sketched out something when I was away from home. And I have an idea of how the design might work, but I'm not entirely sure. And you know what I just realized? I didn't even bring it home with me. Oh, wait, no, I totally did. All right. So you might hear some crinkling. That is actual paper that I brought out to try to get this to work. So I'm going to do this live which is messy because I usually don't do a lot of like live figuring out the puzzles because a lot of it is me just staring at the screen, sometimes muttering to myself because, you know, I think I have an idea and I realize, no, it's stupid, but I'm going to try this, or at least I'm going to get the foundation of what I have in mind out there. So let's go with this. Um, hmm. 
this is a situation where I don't know. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to change that. And like you can already, I'm, I'm muttering to myself. I'm like looking at a piece of paper and saying, hey, yeah, I'm going to make changes here and there. And I'm like arguing with myself and you don't know what I'm talking about, but I'm doing it anyway. But this is how I work and this is what's fun for me. work yeah all right so let's change that to positive so the idea I had here was basically that you're gonna have like a multi-directional like so the basic idea that I have here is that um, I want to check if these are both positive right so, because that's the other thing that I noticed when I looked through this list is that all of the numbers that aren't negative one are positive, which is actually very helpful. So the idea here is that these two will hit at the same time if they're if they're both positive, and this will allow this to flip over and send it through, and then they'll go through and they'll do a secondary check, and then they'll do their thing problem becomes problem comes later when I'm worried about unlocking this but we'll get to that in a minute all right so this is actually like working on pencil and paper this is the sort of thing that I did during uh Space Camp Tournaments. And also, I should note, there's another one coming up soon. Another Space Camp Tournament. I just found out about it via the subreddit. I don't know if I'm actually going to do it because a lot of the time when I enter those, I basically say, um, like, I start off and I have a lot of gusto, and then halfway through I'm like, I could be doing so many better things with my life at this point. And it's it's not a knock on the game. I love it or else I wouldn't still be doing the tournaments. But, you know, you gotta you gotta know when you're beat, I guess. Alright. So Oh yeah, and it was gonna be one right here too. Um Wait, is this right? Yeah, yeah, okay. And this is where the idea that I have too much going on starts to take root. Because I'm trying to make space for stuff and I don't know if I'm going to have space for it all. It's just, uh... Oh, you know what I could do? Since there are never zeros, right? Oh, no, no, that would be terrible. Um, um, hmm. Anywho, what else was I doing? Oops. Let's uh, send one of those here. Alright, well, this was like the rough idea for what I had in mind. And it was basically. Let me go and step here. You come through. If they were both positive, you know, they'd be going through at the same time and everything would be fine. But since they're not, this comes down and this one's acts like this is going to come down as well. And it's going to have to make a duplicate of itself to send to, to B and also to A. Now the problem is I don't have space for that now. I literally do not have space for that. So, yeah, that's not gonna work. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna, I'm just gonna check and see what that does. So, all right, so what I'm gonna do first and foremost is, I'm gonna go here. I'm just going to do this just to 
to check and see if the initial thing works. All right. So this is just, I'm going to dump the first number just to see if everything else works. If it works the way that I expect, then great. There. And then I will get rid of this. Because I don't need it. So you trash the first set. Second set, you come through. No, it's too slow. I didn't realize that. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, that is... Yeah, because it would go through and then... Whatever was behind it would wait. Not what, what was there would wait. Okay, that makes total sense. Anyway, you know what? This is going to take a while, so I'm just going to end it here. But hopefully I'll be back and I will have a solution for this. But, I don't know. If you're interested, you know, I'd say check the game out because I'm enjoying it. It's missing some of the features that you would like in a Zactronics game. Like, there's no real way to share your solutions, you know? Like, all those games are really good about, you know, you'd be able to export a, an animation or a video of your solutions. With this one, it's like, there's nothing built in. So, I'm hoping that they add something like that in the future, but who knows. Anyway, I'm out. I uh, hope you enjoyed this, and uh, I'll see you later, hopefully.